Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations, and welcome to a brand new series that I have titled Connecting with Your Inner Feminine and or Masculine. Yes. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. My name is Eric, and if you are returning, what's up, guys? So, as I stated, Brand new series, Connecting with Your Inner Feminine and or Masculine. In this video, we are going to be speaking to the feminine directly. There will be a separate video for, or I'm sorry, there is a separate video for the masculine, yes? My intention with this reading is for us to have a, a little bit of a conversation with our inner feminine and inner masculine energies. This is an attempt um, on my part and an extension of twi uh, twin flame readings. So getting it's an attempt to get back into readings surrounding uh, twin flame union or divine partnership union, however you want to describe it. Um, I did, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to me and you're new to my channel, you're new to my readings, um, then you may not be aware that I actually started my channel over a year and a half ago by doing twin flame readings. I started doing um, tarot and oracle card readings professionally, really, um, while I was in a sort of phase of some of what many of us are have called or considering a twin flame activation or a twin flame situation. Um, uh, and so I did a weekly twin flame readings for over a year. Um, <clears throat> and then my own journey kind of soured, <laughs> okay? <coughs> Excuse me. You see, um, I, I'm, I'm obviously in resistance to, to talking about it. I have been in resistance for a long time, um, and that is mainly why I stopped doing those readings. Um, but I have been called to return to the scene. So this is my attempt to do so. Now, these readings, the intention here is for you to have a conversation with or get a glimpse of what is going on with your inner masculine or feminine energies. My intention with these readings is not to give you any sort of idea or inclination as to what may be happening with an individual that is external to you. Now, given the nature of how energies are fluid and whatnot, whatever, you probably can get some sort of idea of what may be happening with an external counterpart, okay, that is of this energetic um, um, orientation. However, that is not, let me repeat, that is not the intention with that I hold with these readings. I hold the intention of you having a conversation with, connecting deeper with, understanding, or coming to a deeper understanding of your inner feminine or and your inner masculine energies, yes? All right, so um, we're, start, we're, 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 we're connecting with the feminine here, all right? Um, and I have a number of tarot decks that I'm going to be using to, and I have a list of things that I wanna look at in terms of the feminine and masculine energies. Um, and then I'm gonna be closing the reading with oracle guidance for the feminine, where you're closing the reading with the uh, Love Your Inner Goddess guidance oracle cards um, by Alana Fairchild. Okay, and I'm gonna ask that you guys kinda like bear with me here, roll with me here. This is very, very new. I haven't done any of these readings yet. Um, I've just been, you know, contemplating it, trying to figure out how I wanna do it. I have a list of things that I wanna look into. Um, and we're doing this free form, okay? Other than the, the, the points that I have picked out here that I want to look at. This is literally just a basically a big old freestyle reading. Yes. Um, I would love it if you guys would let me know how this resonates with you, how you enjoyed this, um, maybe some other things you may want to look at in the future. I am looking to do these weekly. All right. So because uh, I feel like that would be really helpful for us. Um, and also I am going to be offering, depending on how popular this is, I am, I will be offering these as a form of a personal reading. Okay. So if you would like to get a personal look into connecting with your own inner feminine or connecting with your own inner masculine, then please, by all means, email me and we'll get it all figured out. Okay. All of the information for my email address and everything is in the description box below as well, as well as other readings that I offer. 
All right, guys. So let's just uh, enough rambling here because that was like a five minute intro. <laughs> let's just get into this here. All right. So we're, we're working with the inner feminine. Working with connecting with your inner divine feminine energies. All right. Um, first thing I want to look at first thing on my list here is what is the current state of your inner feminine energy? But before we get into that, let me just do my normal little thingy here. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us a clear and accurate, accurate representation of the energies of our inner feminine and help us through this reading to build a stronger connection with our inner feminine energies. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So I'm just going to give this deck a few shuffles here. We're starting with what is the current state of, I want to say, our inner feminine energies, because this is, in fact, a, a, a general reading, all right? So you're going to have to take this as it resonates, okay? Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, and I'm starting with the Book of Shadows Tarot for the feminine here. This is a two deck uh, package as above, so below. This is the so below deck, yes? So current state of our or your inner feminine energies. One last shuffle. All right, let's see what we've got here. Current state of your inner feminine energies. Current state of the inner feminine. Current state of the inner feminine. Oof, all right. Ten of Swords with something else underneath that. Let's just see if anything else comes out. Ooh, that, that flashed, but it didn't want to come out, so I'm just going to leave it. We have the Ten of Swords <laughs> with the Seven of Wands. All right. Well, this is very interesting um, because this actually already is falling in line with a reading that I saw by uh, an, a, a, a lovely, lovely woman that goes by the name of Erica Elmutz. Um, I used to watch her readings back when I was in the heat, the depths, the, 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 the thick uh, <laughs> of my twin flame activation period. Um, uh, she used to go by Crystal Rose Insights. That's who she, that was the name of her channel when I first found her. We'll just say, we'll go ahead and say back in the day, which was really only like maybe two years ago, but like whatever. <laughs> um, but right now her channel is under the name of Erica Elmutz. Um, I believe her last name is spelled E-L-M-U-T-S. Uh, please, please correct me if I'm wrong there, but she is fantastic. All right. She is a great channel. She's a great, uh, she's, she's great. But what she has been channeling lately um, I want to say she may have released this reading sometime last week. And oh, wow, um, oh, gosh, there is so much that I have. For, whatever. Anyway, I'm sorry. L today is the seventh of September, so like somewhere around the seventh of September, she released a video about the divine feminine, um, and it was messages. It was a message that came from the divine masculine energies, and it was talking about how the divine feminine has been guarded, has been closed off. OK, and that's exactly what we have here. We have the Ten of Swords with the Seven of Wands. All right. So the current your current inner feminine right now, what I'm feeling is definitely healing, is definitely dealing with an energy of having been through the ringer. And this could be because of your own twin flame circumstances or situations, your own twin flame connection, if that's what you resonate with. You do not have to resonate with the twin flame journey to be a part, to, to resonate with this reading, all right? These are just general. So another scenario could be maybe your inner feminine energy is just battered and bruised just from life. It could be from patriarchal circumstances, you know, like the, the, what not, whatever, the over dominance of masculine energy, uh, twisted masculine energy. That could be a very, I do, actually, I do feel like um, 
there is, with this Ten of Swords here, what I'm feeling is there is some damage, some blockage due to what has been experienced in with interactions with masculine energies, all right? Um, and with the Seven of Wands here, there is very much a very closed off energy. And it, it, it's not, it can be, it can be overly defensive, but that's not what this feels like. This feels like just being on guard, having your boundaries up. And these actually, to be quite honest with you, these could be extremely strong boundaries, okay? Extremely strong. For good reason, sure, but also that could be a blockage for you, for your inner feminine, all right? What's underneath the deck here? The Two of Pentacles, okay. So right now, what I'm feeling like from, in, from, from, the, from the feminine perspective, um, and I do wanna say, uh, <laughs> I do feel the masculine energy around, but, it's, but he's just kinda like watching and paying attention, all right? So for those of you, so for those of you that are more masculinely oriented, this would definitely be a great reading for you to pay attention to, to help you balance out and integrate more 1111, integrate more with your feminine energies, all right? But um, the feminine right now is just really trying to maintain her balance. Um, Two of Pentacles here. I really do feel like um, she's really just trying to enjoy her life, enjoy herself. There may be an energy with this Two of Pentacles, especially with what how it's depicted here in this deck. Um, there may be an energy of her just trying to have fun, uh, trying to enjoy herself, um, maybe focusing on hobbies, maybe focusing on mission work, sure. I'm just getting a strong sense of wanting and needing to learn to love and enjoy herself maybe for the first time or maybe again, all right? So with that said, okay, with that said, with okay, current state of, the, of your inner feminine energy is the Ten of Swords, Seven of Wands. All right, what are the current surrounding energies in relation to how the divine feminine or how your inner feminine, your inner divine feminine or whatnot uh, related to the feminine's current state. So surrounding energies related to the feminine's current state right now. So the feminine is in this ten of swords, seven of wands energy. She's in this defensive energy. But what does that, how does, how does that, how are her current energies, the, the current surrounding energies, the current energy surrounding her, in her physical reality, I guess, or just energetically, how is that relating to where she is in this Ten of Swords, Seven of Wands energy? It looks like it looks like something flipped over. Hold on a second, guys. I can't, I can't seem to find it. I guess it literally looked like it flipped over. I can't imagine it flipped back over. That's crazy. Like I literally saw the whole face of the card, and it looked like it was something of the wand suit. And yeah, it totally went right back. Okay. Ooh, I, I get this feeling, I, and this doesn't feel like the feminine energy. I feel like this is the surrounding energies around the feminine. There, someone doesn't want to talk. Someone's afraid to talk. Someone's afraid to say something. And it, okay, here we go. Um, well, <laughs> and with that said, we have the knave of swords, which. You'll have to excuse me. I don't work with this deck all that often. It's been a long time since I've worked with this deck, and this part kind of confuses me. I need to, I want to make sure I understand what the knave is. The knave can either be the page or the knight. Either way, it's about communication, and there is an energy in the surrounding the feminine of not really wanting to speak because of damage that has been done. And it's almost an energy of feeling guilty for how the feminine may have been treated. Let me see here. Hold on, wait, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, guys. Oh no, where are the court cards? Where are the, sorry guys, please bear with me. Um, I just, before I go any further, I wanna make sure I know what the knave is, what the, yeah, what the knave is, but I can't see, oh God, this is terrible. I have to figure this out. I'm so sorry, I'm so unprepared. <laughs> um, 
I re I kind of want to say that this is the Page of Swords. <sighs> you guys, please, please forgive me. Please, please forgive me. Why can't I find this? All right. I think this is the Page of Swords. We'll figure it out as we move forward. But we have the Knave of Swords. We have the Hanged Man. We have Justice. We have the Four of Cups. and But we also have the Sun. <sighs> I really do feel like this is the page of swords. Current surrounding energies though, surrounding the feminine in terms of this energy of the, with her energy and her being this in, oh sorry, sorry. with the feminine being in this state of uh, 10 of swords, seven of wands, all right? Defensiveness due to some things that have happened in the past. The current surrounding energies here in relation to this, first of all, someone could be watching, all right? The, an, uh, your eyes may be on the feminine to see what she's going to do. Um, but also there's what I'm getting with this Knave of Swords, which I do believe is the Page of Swords. I believe there's an energy of surveillance, sure, but it, 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 it may be in an effort to keep tabs on the feminine, but it's not really not even that. It's more about learning from the feminine, watching her grow and succeed, all right? Cha getting a change in perspective with the Hanged Man and justice here, watching the feminine create her own justice, okay? Um, watching the feminine come out of a sort of a, a boredom, okay? Four of cups with the sun. Um, watching the feminine thrive through a situation of unrequited love, of um, missed opportunity. And this very much feels like a missed opportunity with the feminine, okay? Uh, um, yeah, uh, the sun, you know, finding her own true worth on her own, creating her own sort of justice here. And this really does feel like why someone doesn't really, and it may be the masculine here, and then we have the seven of pentacles. Harvesting, reaping what she has sown, reaping an energy of, or, or being in an energy of reaping what she has sown in, put, in having put in a lot of work to better herself. Now, if you are of more of a masculine point of view, okay, I do feel like there is a sense of inner betrayal when it comes to the feminine, your inner feminine, all right? Now, I don't have any of those cards here other than the Ten of Swords, to be quite honest. The Ten of Swords can very much be about betrayal. Um, and I feel like if you are of the more of a masculine energy, it's, it's, it's been difficult for you to connect with the feminine because of your lack of awareness of betrayal, of how you may have been betraying your inner feminine, how you may have been betraying other feminines around you, which absolutely would be a reflection of your relationship with your own inner feminine. Um, and that betrayal I'm feeling is coming from a need to control. It's also coming from a sense of conformity, um, especially for those who are of the masculine orientation energetically, there is a strong sense of conformity when it comes to the masculine, whereas the feminine is way more free-spirited, uh, cardinal-type energy, um, uh, 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 independent, uh, going her own way, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. The masculine struggles with that. And a lot of what has happened in the past has been an effort to control the feminine, which has led to circumstances surrounding, uh, uh, involving some sort of betrayal which has then caused the feminine to close herself off. To be, uh, in a sense, you can say with this Ten of Swords energy here, you see that, that bird, it, de it definitely does resemble a phoenix. And it's almost as if, because this is, this is the, um, uh, the Book of Shadows Tarot, so this tends to be very uh, themed t around witchcraft. You could see this woman is doing a ritual of releasing here, right? with a phoenix rising from her hand, okay? She's, she's become a brand new person and she's very, very guarded. Now, some of this guarded energy is an over, overly defensive type energy, but she's very aware of where she's come from and what has happened in the past that has, in fact, led her to this place of understanding, sure, transformation, sure, a new perspective, sure. But this justice was hard won. 
it was absolutely hard won. And thus, that's what's leading to the defensive energies in that seven of wands, okay? Okay, so, cool. Next thing I wanna look at, current challenges or lessons for your inner feminine. What is, what are the lessons that your inner feminine is facing right now? What is your inner feminine challenged with right now, all right? And I am using, for this, I'm using the, um, oh goodness, the Wild Unknown Tarot, all right? One more shuffle here for your inner feminine. What is she currently being challenged by? What, what are her growth opportunities? What are the lessons she is facing right now? I'm gonna give this one more shuffle. Oh, and uh, I do have my window open. So you, there, there, you may hear a bunch of noise from the outside, but don't worry about that. All right, so what, is, what are the current challenges that your inner feminine are facing? I'm definitely getting a sense that this guardedness that came through in the beginning of it, the reading here is a bit of a challenge for the feminine. Um, but there is a little, uh, and I'm totally resonating with this, but I, I'm, I'm picking up on it also. There is a bit of stubbornness in letting the guard down. Four of wands. Okay. Very interesting. The four of wands is a good thing here. And do you see how it fell on this pile? What this is saying here, the Four of Wands is saying that whatever your, your inner feminine is going through in terms of the current sur energy surrounding her and her current state, this is actually, this is actually much more of a good thing than we may have thought, than we may have originally picked up on, mainly because of the fact that this is providing strong stability very strong stability for your inner feminine, okay? Let's see, what else? The current challenges. Okay, there we go, that's enough. All right, so we have judgment, we have the king of swords. Wow, we have the page of swords again, and we have the hanged man again. Overall energy is the five of cups. Oh. Now, these energies here that the current that the, that the that your inner feminine are currently in, these are good, all right, because it's related to the challenge that is in front of the feminine, and this again feels like it falls, it resonates right along with that at the the reading that Erica Elmutz did recently, um, early September, late August, I want to say. If you're finding this reading much much later. Um, very much in line with what Erica was channeling for the Divine Feminine energies. The Divine Feminine right now is being tasked with learning balance. I do feel like whatever happened here that has put the, your inner feminine in this Ten of Swords, Seven of Wands state really pushed your inner feminine into a, to an extreme defensive position. All right. And your inner feminine is now needing to learn discernment. King of swords, page of swords or daughter of swords. OK, father and daughter. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. There is definitely a, 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 a def it's almost as if some of you or some of your inner feminines are defending themselves with the ferocity or the ferociousness of a protective father. Okay, what I'm getting with the King of Swords and the Page of Swords here in the challenge that your inner feminine is, is, is facing right now is learning discernment, learning how to better defend oneself. I feel like this is an extreme pendulum swing, whereas on one side, the feminine was extremely giving, very much lacked boundaries, um, very much lacked any sort of healthy boundaries or whatnot, whatever, and was overly giving. Now the pendulum has swung to the extreme other side where the, the feminine is not so inclined to give. I'm not saying that she's not giving. She's definitely still giving to the people that she knows she feels comfortable with. But there's an extreme guardedness surrounding this giving aspect. There's an ex there is a lot of resentment that I was picking up on when as, as soon as I saw the judgment card. Um, 
And in terms of that, judgment here is speaking to learning how to forgive, okay, and let go. Um, yeah, the pendulum has really swung to the exact opposite side. And so now the feminine is in the process of learning how to deal with the grief, okay? She's still dealing with a whole, a ton of grief, not gonna lie, very much still dealing with a ton of grief, five of, pen, five of cups, but also the hanged man, again, change in perspective, learning to see something differently, especially with judgment here. The big, the big lesson, the big lesson that your inner feminine is dealing with right now is learning how to forgive. Learning how to forgive and release and not hold on to resentment any longer. Resentment is a big, big issue for the inner feminine right now. Very big issue. Okay. So with that said, next what I want to look at, I want to ask, what does your inner feminine want you to know right now? Okay. In terms of connecting with her, in terms of healing, all right, in terms of finding this union, this balance within, what does your inner feminine, what does your inner feminine want to say to you right now? We're using the golden universal tarot for this. What does your inner feminine want you to know? I'll give this three shuffles. What does your inner feminine want you to know? What does your inner feminine want to say to you? You could look at this part as what does the inner feminine, you maybe what does the inner feminine want to say to the inner masculine? Or just to you as this conscious individual in this meat suit <laughs> at this current moment in time, working on your own sense of inner union, yes? What does your inner feminine want you to know right now? One last shuffle. All right, let's see what we have here. What does your inner feminine want you to know? What does your inner feminine want you to know? All right. Oh, well, okay. Overall energy, we have the two of wands. We have the two of cups. We have the page of cups with strength <laughs> and the hanged man again. And finally, the Six of Cups. All right. So, lots of energies of balance here. Um, first and foremost, she's saying, I'm sorry, with this Page of Cups energy. She is absolutely saying that she's sorry. She's absolutely wanting, for, for whatever, for, for, for her role in whatever has gone on in the dynamic between masculine and feminine. I'm sorry for my own inner, my own sense of twisted femininity. I'm sorry for whatever I have done that you have perceived as wrong, mean, nasty. Oh, I wanted to say hoish. Okay, what, what, not whatever. Um, she's also asking for some sort of forgiveness on her part because she does, in fact, want to come together. She does, in fact, want to have this union within, all right? Um, she is working very, very hard, very hard to gain some sort of new perspective here. Look, guys, I mean, you can't make this shit up. And this is exactly why I wanted to use separate decks for these different questions, because I wanted to see the similarities in the energies. And we have the hanged man in all three in all three of these questions for the feminine right now. What, she, what the inner feminine wants you to know is if she is coming across as super distant, extremely closed off, whatnot, whatever, she is in the process of gaining her own perspective. Well, gaining a new perspective, changing her perspective, okay? I'm also getting a sense with this Six of Cups here. She's desiring, she's, she, she's saying that she desires to experience the, the good stuff again. All right? This is, the Six of Cups to me is, is speak, at this moment is speaking of the nostalgia 
of the balance, the harmony, when the masculine and feminine were best friends, when the masculine and feminine were two parts of the same whole and were working together. She misses that. She craves that. She wants that back. And she is trying very, very hard. <laughs> She's trying very hard to gain her own source of equilibrium, her own source of balance when it comes to that. But she does recognize that she's got a lot of work to do or she has some, she has some tough challenges ahead of her that it's not going to be easy for her to get back into that balanced state. With the Two of Wands here, um, the Two of Wands, yes, could be about a choice, but in all honesty, I'm seeing the Two of Wands as an energy of... Um, the pendulum swinging, I'm seeing the pendulum that I was talking about before, but coming into balance, okay? Not swing, swinging uh, to the extremes any longer, but coming into a balance, all right? That's really what I'm seeing with the Two of Wands. And you can see that as a choice or like a path, like your path or something like that, um, because ultimately that's what we're all after here, but that's really what I'm seeing that Two of Wands as. All right, so now... Last bit from the tarot that I want to get in terms of connecting with your inner feminine. Um, what are the action steps that you can take to help facilitate this process for yourself, for your inner feminine? And I'm using the Tarot of Dreams by Ciro Marchetti. I have had this deck. This was one of the very first decks that I, that I received when I started doing um, readings professionally and I have never used it because there are all kinds of symbols and stuff on the cards that I wanted to get familiar with that I just never did and so I never used it. But now we're gonna use it, all right. So action steps that you can take to help facilitate the bond and the connection between you and your own inner feminine energies, okay? One last shuffle. What action steps can you take to facilitate the bond, the healing, the connection, the change in perspective here for your inner feminine energy? What action steps can you take? What action steps can you take for your inner feminine to connect with your inner feminine? King of Swords. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, guys. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's a lot, but whatever. Overall energy. We have, ooh, the Eight of Swords. Wow. Uh, the Eight of Swords. Overall, and no? Yes, that's the Eight of Swords. Release yourself. This is Gemini energy, and I believe this is the card of this symbol is Jupiter here. Um, but releasing yourself from some sort of mental prison of the way things are should be or supposed to be or or something like that. Listen, especially for those of you that are more masculinely oriented, the feminine energies represent cardinal energy. What is cardinal energy? Cardinal energy is trailblazer, go-getter, independent, free thinker, free spirit, doing things their own way, trying something new, not afraid to make mistakes, not afraid to get messy, not afraid to do something, to go against the grain, to do something unconventional, to do something that someone has never seen before, create something someone has never seen before. And one of the biggest blockages between the masculine and the feminine energy is the masculine's natural need or desire to control. But it has gotten out of control in terms of in the sense of conformity. No one is meant to be the same. Yes, we all come from the same source, but we are all different. We all have our own different ways of expressing ourselves. Feminine energy understands that. It's the masculine that really works to build some sort of structure of conformity, which is destructive, is incredibly destructive. It's more destructive than it is creative at least when it comes to the feminine. Now, that also is where the feminine needs to become more balanced because she also needs to work on um, 
I mean, she could use, in her more extreme moments, she could definitely, she could definitely use a good amount of structure, all right? But structure at the expense of individuality is a problem, is a big problem for the feminine, all right? So that's what that Eight of Swords is talking about. We have the King of Swords here, all right? Now, the masculine is showing up here in the King of Swords, but the King of Swords is saying, you need to be diplomatic. You need to be honest. You need to be open. You need to be sincere. You need to be able to have an open mind, all right? Whether you are, I mean, I mean now, the, the, the King of Swords is, is not really trying to deal, is not really, really trying to fuck with emotions, okay? He can be very cold and aloof. All of, none of the sword suit really deals with emotions, all right? It's really mental in nature. But really the guidance here is to be diplomatic, is be willing to see things from different points of view. And we had the hanged man come out three times in all the rest of the reading here. The feminine needs an open mind. The feminine needs an individual that is willing to see things. At least you don't have to agree with her. Sometimes she would prefer that you didn't agree with her. But what you do need to do is at least try to have an open mind. Try to see things from a different point of view. Yes, we have the magician. We have the seven of swords. We have the ten of wands. We have the star. We have the page of wands. We have the nine of swords. And then we have the palace of coins. Now, I am not really all that familiar with the palace cards. I want to look and I'm going to get into the book here for that so we can I can get a little more information. Um, like I said, I've never used these cards before. Now, hopefully I can find this one a little easier. <laughs> Palace of Coins. Palace of Coins. The other palaces are, f are fun places to visit, but the Palace of Coins uh, is where we live. Yeah. Here's where we feel safe and secure, where we can tend to our earthly needs, where we can be kings and queens of our own castle. Here we also can experience the four elemental energies uh, as full human, fully human attributes. Um, uh, okay. So what this is talking about, this is talking about the home. The abode and that to me is very much the internal uh situation here the the your internal reality um give me a second we have the magician with the seven of swords and the ten of wands so there is definitely an element the, what the divine what the inner feminine uh, action steps to help connect with your inner feminine is to stop sabotaging yourself Okay, and stop sabotaging your ability to manifest. Again, in keeping an open mind here, the feminine is saying by holding on to all of these burdens, you are in fact deceiving yourself. You are robbing yourself of your natural ability to manifest. But your natural ability to manifest is twofold. It comes from both masculine and feminine energies. But with this chokehold we have on the, on the feminine, right? That energy is stifled and that's what helps push the feminine away. So instead of that, we need to start to heal and we need to start to, to discover more of who we truly are. Page of Wands and the star, all right? There is anxiety surrounding that, but, what, but the action steps here face those anxieties face them dead on okay it's literally what the i mean action steps in 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 connecting with your inner feminine stop fearing yourself there is nothing to be afraid of you are a multifaceted multi-dimensional energetically eternal divine being the only thing that will expire about your existence is your physical body, the meat suit that you are currently inhabiting. That is literally the only thing about you currently that will expire. Once your body expires, your soul, your energy, your individuality, your personality will continue to live on in perpetuity. 
all right? Stop being afraid of yourselves. Discover who you truly are. The inner your inner feminine holds that knowledge, okay? But it's the ego and it's the twisted sense of masculinity that, we're, that works to keep that at bay because it doesn't fit in with the status quo. Well, you're not meant to fully fit in with the status quo. You are an individual and your inner feminine wants you to recognize that, wants you to start discovering that, wants you to, to start healing that. Because when you heal that, when you embrace your individ individuality, you start to embrace all parts of yourself and that includes your inner feminine. Okay? Clean up your home. Recognize that your, your body and your energetic space are your temple. And that can be expressed in any way that is, that is right for you. She wants to feel safe in her own home again. It's time to start clearing out the cobwebs and all of that. Yes? All right. So now I want to close the reading with our oracle guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess deck. All right, guys. Here we go. Thank you for bearing with me. This is the first time I'm doing this. It seems great. I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say about this. But All right, one more shuffle here, and then we will get our closing guidance. All right. For your inner feminine, closing guidance on connecting with your inner feminine energies. Okay, card number 31, Magdalene. You are stronger than you think. Mm-hmm. I know that's right. Which boils down to a four. 31 boils down to a four. And we started with the four of wands. Not, no, we didn't start with it. But we do have the four of wands here. In, what is this? This is um, uh, the current challenges for the inner feminine. But, all right, card number 31. Magdalene. The divine spirit in you needs to feel cherished, adored, loved, and worshipped for all that she is, for all that she offers. She has much so. What? I think this is a typo. She has so much love to give from her heart through the intimate sharing of her innermost self, through connection, touch, and the sacred pleasure of her body. She knows that expression of love through the body are a sacred gift of high value and worthy of appreciation and respect. They are not to be demanded or taken for granted, abused or criticized in any, in any way. Some who lack wisdom may try to shame her and judge her gifts of physical love. Some may claim that, uh, that they are owed her gifts of love and say that she must provide them on demand. Maybe they threaten to withdraw their love otherwise to harm or reject you or try to satisfy their behavior with their, quote, rights, legal or otherwise. That is always, without exception, unacceptable and a blasphemy against the goddess. You are a sister of Magdalene, a priestess of love above this, uh, um, sorry, upon this earth. You are worthy of respect and you have the power to assert your value, your purity and your grace, no matter what has been or may be, no matter whether others understand or agree with you. You know that dignity is always yours by divine decree. You need only claim it for yourself. In a reading, this says you can experience a feeling of being completely reborn, like a mythical phoenix rising from the ashes of, once, of what once was, the past completely burned away. And that is absolutely what we got here in the Ten of Swords, in the current energies that, the divine fem that your inner feminine are in. Okay? It is not about forgetting the past, but it is the reality that the past doesn't have to, any hold over you. 
you are being given a spiritual blessing from deep within your heart to cast off anything and everything without exception from the past that does not bring you peace. The universe wants to take it from you, so let it go. There is now a brand new you, clean, fresh, and ready to start again with the protective grace of the divine all around you and within you, shining bright and true. And then the sacred uh, ritual for this card says, you can use a red scarf or a pashim, pashimna. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. Pajmina, there it is. You can use a red scarf or pajmina as a veil in this ritual, or you can use your imagination. Place the red veil over your head and say, the red veil of love created from the blood of the divine heart made flesh cleanses and protects me now. Through this extraordinary grace, I am freed from the pain of judgment, betrayal, and abandonment. I reclaim my feminine dignity. I accept and honor my sacred beauty. There you have it, guys. So, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please, please, please let me know how this resonates for you. If there is enough interest, if you guys are interested, I would absolutely be willing to offer these as a personal reading. Yes? With that said, I hope you guys have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!